this video is being sponsored by Skillshare. Hello, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk about the positive aspects of a writer's uniform. As an aside, you could also use a character's uniform to kind of get you in the zone. Kind of like that fun hack of putting a fan on yourself and constantly blowing it to kind of simulate wind. If your character was in a windy environment, you could wear something in particular that would make you be more aware of perhaps what your character could be wearing, the feel of the fabric, the kind of limitations to movement. Anyways, as someone who has worked from home and worked for myself for the past few years, even pre-pandemic, I have gotten into the habit, and I'm not gonna say it's good or bad, uh, because there have been times I quite enjoy it. I have gotten into the habit of just kind of rolling out of bed and then immediately going to work and working in my pajamas all day. It is one of the great pros to be as comfortable as is humanly possible. But kind of like my purposes for being on a quest to find the perfect coffee shop for writing in, uh, I have been feeling the need to like change it up a little bit. Maybe not work in pajamas. And so I challenged myself to wear a, a writer's uniform to kind of be like, okay, I'm, I'm going to work. It kind of accidentally on purpose, this is what I was hoping for, but I didn't know if it would, made a very clear separation between my like home chill life and my work life. Because when I'm in my work clothes, I am working. So this is gonna be a writing vlog with kind of a specific purpose, but I will say that I finished a project during this time and also uh, finished Camp NaNoWriMo during this time. So you are going to see a little bit of that and in fact I had a revelation the very first day that I, I donned my writer's uniform about the kind of boss that I was being to myself. As a self-employed person you have to be both the boss and the employee and I, I was not a very kind boss before, before this week. <laughs> You know what's funny is that as soon as I sat down here and was like put on my little boss cap and was like what is an amount of work that I would assign someone, I had a visceral reaction to what I've actually like assigned myself the past couple of weeks. <laughs> I would be like I would never assign anyone that amount of work because it's not realistic and what a fucking like light bulb. I've thought that for a while as evidenced by me being completely incapable of hitting everything on my to-do list. But it wasn't until I was like, no, I would never assign that amount of work to someone that I'm like, but why am I doing that? Why am I assigning that amount of work to myself? <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> it's also worth noting that for the first time in a while, I'm actually like on time <laughs> to the Twitch stream. Like I'm at the desk early. I meant to start working at 10, but we're just gonna play around with it. The rules are gonna be a little loosey-goosey. But I'll probably finish doing a little bit around the house and then come back just a few minutes before 10. But interesting that getting dressed and getting ready, which is getting dressed and like not sleep clothes, <laughs> was enough to propel me to be like, well, I am here at work on time early. <laughs> I'm not gonna read too much into it. It's like she was called in here. and we have finished that stream. I did manage to complete chapter four, so I gotta X that off my list. And then I did start on chapter five, got a little bit done in there, very excited to hopefully finish that chapter um, with the double streams today. Ha. And as I mentioned earlier, this video is being sponsored by Skillshare. Kind of in theme with this video, some of the classes I've been taking have been 
maybe personal improvement kind of uh, ways to hack my day <laughs> because that can be something that constantly working from my home and not having co-workers and all these other things that I sometimes struggle with being my own boss. <laughs> so I've especially loved Mike Vardy's class, Productivity Habits That Stick Using Time Theming. Now I never heard of time theming before but one of the things I especially loved was his concept of like about a boy syndrome based off of the movie. So Hugh Grant's character has all of his day scheduled to like the 15 minutes and all of a sudden a boy shows up and throws a wrench into his carefully curated plan, right? Well that is life. <laughs> and as someone who has incorrectly planned my day before many a times, I think I've fallen into that about a boy syndrome where I've just not allowed for life's disruptions. Um, it's something that over the course of the last year I've been trying to get better at, just knowing my own kind of cycles with things. But to have sort of a name for it and recognize how it affects the day-to-day -day is really helpful. And I especially loved his sort of hack to get around that issue or to evolve past that issue of taking your to-do list and making it more general for chunks and then the things maybe like no more than three that absolutely need to get done especially the things that you sometimes find yourself skipping like exercise or anything else you make that at a specific time so you're only having a few things at a very specific time in your day and then all the rest is a more general this is this time to get something done. So for me, it's like, okay, this is my writing time. Okay, this is my video editing time. This is this time. And I have like a loose chunk from which to do it. But my stream always happens here and my exercise happens here sort of thing. Those are the only things that I put down as a time in my calendar, AKA do not panic plan your day like this because all that happens is that you're just, you're inevitably not gonna get something done. The about a boy, the boy will appear <laughs> and throw everything off course and it has a kind of cascading effect. So if in the planning stage you plan correctly, then you can avoid all of that. So anyways, and the first 1,000 of y'all to click my link down below or use my code Kate Kavanaugh will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So one of the interesting things of trying to set all of this up was figuring out what was and wasn't work. So obviously when you're working from home, you have a lot more flexibility than when you're in the office. When I was working corporate, I got to both work from the office and from home. And while some people like walked around our giant, you know, five, six story building while on call, you know, getting their steps and stuff like that, kind of multitasking it a little bit. Um, it is easier to do while you're working from home potentially if you have a headset or whatever else. So like what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go walk the dogs, but I am then curious about how I define work itself. So as someone who's doing like creative e-things or like doing vlogs, things I might do for a live stream or something, can I count that as work or is it like extra bonus stuff? I've really never figured out how to count it, but I am going to be listening to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green for our author tube chat book club pick. Does that count? I don't know. So let me grab my headphones and grab the dogs and we will be on the ground. On the trail? Yes. <laughs> Good job, though. So one of the things I'm finding really interesting is that uh, something about dressing for work <laughs> does actually trick my brain into thinking that like I'm supposed to be working because I wouldn't just wear this to lounge around in even though I'm clearly like working from the bed in a lounge like manner. <laughs> so, you know, nice little hack. My parents did visit. So we'll pretend that they were my coworkers visiting me. I'm actually on uh, a task that I assigned for another day just because I think I might actually achieve all the tasks I set out to do today. But that said, it is four, which would normally be my like I'm stopping work time. But of course I will be working again at six and writing, hopefully finishing chapter five while my brother and I are streaming. Maybe I'll kind of like tally that at the end. Maybe that's like the leftover time from when my parents visited for an hour. Anyways, things to consider for this experiment, but I'll pretend that dressing up helped. <laughs> Don't even have to pretend, but for now I'm going to take a break and finish the job I started. <laughs> so now we should probably talk about what technically consisted of my uniform. I mostly wore rompers or jeans or 
dresses or whatever else. Definitely not stuff that I could have gotten away with at my corporate job, but I do think could work in like slightly more lax office settings. I also usually try to pair some earrings with the outfit, but all of the outfits, while not quite, you know, go to sleep in comfortable, were still movable. Definitely not as bad as my corporate days. And I do need to share with you the jig I tried to do to show that uh, before from a different angle and was a fail. <laughs> Now I also want to talk about working on the weekend. That is something that I've been trying to get away from and yet it's also something that ultimately I enjoy what I do. So while I do think breaks are necessary, I also find myself hanging around the house and being like, you know, I really want to work. You know, I really want to write my story. I really want to edit this video or whatever. So I found that maybe the perfect <laughs> combo is working like four hours on a Saturday and making sure that no matter what on Sunday I'm completely free. So if I have a job description that's kind of what it would include. Working from Monday to Friday and then a little bit on Saturday with a free day on Sunday. Also because it was Saturday I allowed myself to have a casual Saturday of sorts and just wear my pajamas again. <laughs> I'm someone who usually likes to start my day as early as I can because my brain works best then. And so if I'm not putting on my working clothes, my writer's uniform, I still wanna get work done earlier. So that's kind of been the interesting thing. I basically tried to set a goal of being in my writer's uniform from 10 to four, but I could do work before then. I could also then take a break in between so long as I kind of got to the desk at about 10. Okay. So I've actually done a substantial amount of work. I am completely outlining a new thing that I'm not otherwise allowed to touch until the end of uh, <laughs> the month. But I got all the characters added and uh, I did a little bit of this last night because I was just trying to get it out of my head. Um, but I also figured out all the vague outline and more or less some of the timeline, which is awesome at 901 words and in this one. I just crossed the 47,000 word mark this morning. Did a little bit of research on that as well. So I'm feeling really good. I actually canceled my Twitch stream earlier today, uh, which would be in eight minutes um, so that I can focus on the writing. I'm just like, I have been texting myself nonstop. Um, I was telling the boyfriend that I text myself maybe like once a day or I write down an idea once a day, um, you know, something that comes up when I'm not actively writing. But lately it's been like five ideas a day where I'm just like, oh my God, for various stories. So I knew that I just needed- I ran out of space. <laughs> so really I knew I just needed to like get as much done as I could possibly could today and just like stay in the zone. Yes, just live in that zone. So that's what I'm doing. I am on my second cup of coffee, almost dropped my phone. <laughs> And now I'm actually going to revisit a very old project as I had two sort of epiphanies. Um, yeah, while I've actually been listening to a book, which is great, I love when that happens. So I need to make those notes in there. And once again, it's something that I really don't want to touch until the end of the month, but I gotta get it out of this brain. <laughs> and then there's the balance of working for myself. So utilizing the time that uh, could potentially be more difficult when you have nine to five. Like we had local elections, so I went and voted midday. So I violated my own 10 to four rule in order to go vote at about 1.30. So then I come back and then I'm kind of loosey goosey with, do I finish at four? Do I work again at seven? Do I work again at nine on a Friday? But there's lots of things to consider here. It has helped me learn that the writer's uniform <laughs> does really help my mindset in a lot of ways. So I think it's something that kind of like going to a coffee shop would encourage me in a different way. Maybe something to kind of get out of my rut, get out of that routine. I did this experiment over the course of basically like three, four weeks and I did not do it every single day. Um, I did want to share though, that very first day where I was like, how much work should I assign myself? And thinking I was crazy for the normal amounts that I try and <laughs> that I try and give myself. This page. If I were my boss, how much work would I assign myself to get done? So I kind of started from Friday to Thursday 
the 15th to the 21st doing three things per day so example friday i had two live streams two and a half live streams so that is enough hours that i counted it as a work thing that i needed to do with the live streams i needed to film a particular video and I needed to get chapters four and five done was the goal. That was that first day that y'all saw during this vlog. And so as I was making these lists, it took me a bit until I got to the end as I realized that realistically, I could probably only get three things done. So that doesn't mean film, edit, post. That means choose and edit one, you know? Um, that doesn't mean chapter four and five. That means chapter four. And then there's the weird things where like live streams, there's some kind of overlap. So I still count that as one of the three things, but obviously I am able to get some of the chapters done while doing the live stream. So again, there's a lot of questions on still for me what my schedule looks like, um, but, but this did help. And it did help me realize I've been kind of mulling over this epiphany. For the time throughout April, I was doing a couple extra writing streams because I was going to be doing stuff with my brother. And then I was acting as co-host for a couple streams. All of these things I really loved and were really fun, but was very difficult for me on top of the four other streams a week I was doing. And as you all saw, at one point I was talking about canceling streams because I just needed to get some writing work done. And so this has really given me the opportunity to kind of reevaluate how I'm doing things. So for me, I love doing the streams. I love getting to connect with the community and hang out with other writers, um, especially as I've not found my perfect coffee shop yet. And I don't have, you know, a group of friends in person, but I do have a group of online friends to write with, right? So. I think though, what I need to do is, I've decided, uh, three streams a week, reliably, that I do on Twitch. That gives me more time to kind of, you know, as writers, there's a bit where we kind of get in the zone and trying to stay in the zone. And I love sprints and I love the community, but I don't know that the, you know, I would say one in three streams, I'm able to get in that zone during the sprints. Um, and really like the whole time I'm in that zone. Versus if I'm, if I don't have a stream day, I don't have to start getting ready for the stream. I don't have to start and stop in the same way. So I can kind of be writing all day or kind of experience that zone and state in it. So anyways, three streams, I, I put it up for a poll. So I think it's gonna be Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday over on Twitch. And then whenever I have bonus or co-hosting streams, I won't feel tired by the time the next week rolls around by kind of doing too many of these things, right? So I'm really excited for that change and I don't know that I would have realized it, you know, maybe not the, the dressing up part, the writer's uniform part, but all of this kind of things that I'm considering as I'm trying to um, figure out what works for me. And I think this is something that's good to reevaluate um, every now and then. It's kind of like just, you know, every six months and now I have a new system and uh, we shall try it and I shall see if I glean anything more from it. But please do comment down below. Let me know if you have a writer's uniform and I'm gonna say that that can possibly include the things you need to have in your area. Maybe whatever helps you to get in that zone, whether it is a wrist brace, if it is you use the same mug every day and that helps you get in the writer zone. It doesn't have to be quite literally an outfit that you're putting on, but I would also love to know if you are someone who works from home, how you're able to sort of delineate between home life and work life now that we are, you know, two plus years into the pandemic. And let me just know if you've had any other epiphanies kind of recently about your own writing routine or writing structure or how your writing fits into your everyday life. I would love to know. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and I will see you all very soon with a new one. Bye.